If I can't picture it, I can't understand it. Albert Einstein. Welcome students. Today in the chapter, Methods of Work Energy and Power, we discuss Work Kinetic Energy Theorem. This theorem is based on fundamental definition of mechanical work or simply work because work is defined as transfer of mechanical energy. Now if we suppose a single particle or a rigid body in translation motion or rotatory motion. For such a body or such a particle, only kinetic energy can be defined because to define potential energy, we need internal forces. And for internal forces, we need a system of at least two bodies or a system of more bodies. Now, in such situation, if you consider a single particle or single rigid body, the entire mechanical energy of that body will be only kinetic. So work done by all the forces will be converted into kinetic energy of the particle. That is what basis of this theorem. Now, we first deduce the theorem and our deduction process we see the limitations where it can be used, where it cannot be used and if it can be used in some situation, what are the limitations. So let us first try to understand how this theorem is developed. Work kinetic energy theorem. As I have said, we consider a situation in which we, we take a particle, single particle, not a system. And because for such a particle, only kinetic energy can be defined. Now let us uh, see the situation here. Consider a particle of mass m moving on an arbitrary curvilinear path at an instant, its velocity vector v, the net external force summation f vector, acting on it and displacement dr vector in an infinitely small time interval are shown here in the figure. See on this curvilinear path this particle is moving and at the instance shown its velocity vector is v and here is the net actional force summation f vector. Now this dr vector is the infinitely small displacement in a very negligible time or can say infinitely small time. Now how we can analyze this we just Consider work done by all these forces, this net force on this uh, particle in this time interval in which displacement is dr vector. Work done by all the forces acting on the particle in an infinitely small time interval is dw is equal to summation f dot dr. Resolving the net external force into its tangential and the normal components and applying Newton's law, what we can do, we get this one, see here, this is uh, the force, dr vector and uh, these rectangles will show the normal component here and tangential component here. So this is summation F2, the net tangential component of force and summation Fn, net normal component of force and if we apply Newton's law, we can write uh, the net effective force, ma vector. And we resolve the MA vector in tangential normal component. So this is MA vector. That is again this line will show the tangential component. This line will show the normal component MA tau vector and MAN vector. And we know that MAN is what? MV square by radius of curvature. And A tau is rate of change in speed. But what we can write from here. Just see DW is equal to F tau summation plus Fn summation dot dr. Now if we solve this dot product, the first term will have only meaning and second term summation Fn dot dr will be zero because summation Fn is perpendicular to dr vector. So what we get here dw is equal to summation F tau dot dr. Now summation F tau from Newton's second law can be written as m e tau. So what we can write here m e tau dot dr. Now we know that uh, dw is equal to m v dv by dr dot dr because a tau is v dv by dr. Now just dr and dr will cancel and what is remaining with us m v dv. Now we can perform integration denoting speeds of particle by vi and vf at the initial and final positions defined by position vector ri vector and rf vector. The total work done by all the forces acting on the particle over a displacement from the initial position to the final position can be obtained as 
W i to f integral from R i vector to R f vector summation f vector dot dr vector and its value is what? M v dv. So v i to v f m v dv because uh, here variable has been changed from R to v. So we change the corresponding limit because at position vector R i speed was v i. At position vector R f speed was v f what we have assumed earlier here. Now this integration is very simple that will be half m v final square minus half v half m v initial square. So half m v final square minus half m v initial square and we know that this is the final kinetic energy and this is the initial kinetic energy. Now we denote these kinetic energies by symbols k f and k i denoting the initial and the final kinetic energies by k i and k f we can express the above result as w i to f is equal to k final minus k i and this statement is the r work kinetic energy theorem. Work done by all the external forces acting on a particle in carrying it from one position to the other is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the particle between these positions. This statement is statement of work kinetic energy theorem and we again write the work energy theorem. So W i to f is what summation R i to R f uh, that summation f dot dr and we can write it summation R i to R f f dot dr. What does it mean? Either we integrate the net force dot dr or we uh, integrate each individual force dot dr and then sum and this is what sum of uh, that is work of net force this is what sum of work of all individual forces there will be equal and this will be equal to k final minus k initial so this is what work energy theorem so this theorem we can use either this way we can uh, calculate the net force and uh, its work or we can calculate work of each individual force separately and sum up them and here is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. One more thing, this theorem is known as various names. What the names are? Work kinetic energy theorem. Sometimes it is called work energy theorem and sometimes it is called work energy principle. This idea is known as the work kinetic energy theorem or work energy theorem or work energy principle. Now we discuss applications of this theorem. Applications of work kinetic energy theorem. That is very important point to discuss here because majority of the problems where we will use this theorem can be solved by applying Newton's law, finding acceleration and then integrating the acceleration finding change in velocities or change in speeds. Actually if you think the deduction process of this theorem you will find that these two steps are combined. So the situations where space interval and speed change are involved. Instead of using Newton's law and then kinematics, we can use a single step process work energy theorem and that is the area where this theorem can be used. So what we can conclude, work kinetic energy theorem finds its applications to analyze situations involving speed change over a space interval. and here this uh, application of this theorem will save your time because uh, using two-step process uh, finding acceleration and then using kinematics and then finding speed change over a space interval is what somewhat time consuming. The theorem developed for a particle can also be used for a rigid body non-deformable. Why non-deformable? Because if the body is deformable then forces exerted on it can produce deformation and some of the work done by these forces can go into elastic potential energy of the body in deformation. So here we conclude that uh, to what kind of body will use this theorem to a particle or a rigid body in translatory or rotatory motion particularly at present we are discussing only translatory motion. The the theorem is deduced for an inertial frame of reference, yet it is valid for a non-inertial frame. 
but first we consider its application in inertial frame. Actually, this theorem will be valid for all kinds of inertial frame as well as for non-inertial frames. But how can we use this theorem for a non-inertial frame? We discuss in the next lecture. Today we have deduced the theorem for an inertial frame. So we'll use its application for inertial frames. But how this theorem can be applied? Again, if you demark the process into steps, the application will be easy. So what the steps are to be considered while using this theorem, let us see how to use the theorem. To use the work energy theorem, the following steps are recommended to follow. I'm here, I'm saying the steps are recommended, not necessary. What is first step? Identify the initial and final positions and write expressions for kinetic energies at these positions. Second step, draw the free bird diagram of the body at any intermediate stage to calculate work done by each force. The total work of all the forces is equal to the sum of all these works. Actually here, this uh, uh, idea has been explained here mathematically. That is what this uh, first term, this term will express work of net force and what it shows? Sum of work of each individual force. So that idea will be somewhat uh, helpful. What we do, we draw the ABD. In ABD, we show all the individual forces. And again, we show the displacement. And by uh, just observing that diagram, the forces and displacement, we will be in a situation to calculate the work of each individual force very easily. And what is the third step? Substitute the total work obtained in step second and kinetic energies in step one into the theorem. And uh, in this way, the solution is complete. Now, we'll try to uh, apply this theorem according to these steps in some situations so that we can understand this way. Again, I'm saying following these steps, I'm recommending here, not necessary, but if you follow this step, you'll find the applications of the theorem very simple. Now, before proceeding with the examples, let us discuss another very important concept that is concept of power. Power, the amount of available energy decides the amount of work that can be done, but not the duration in which the work can be accomplished. Actually, how much energy we have, that decides how much work can be done, but it does not decide how fast the work can be done and or in what duration the work can be done and the duration in which a work can be accomplished sometimes becomes a very necessary criteria. Duration in which a work has to be completed often becomes a necessary criterion. This makes it necessary to define the time rate at which work is done as a physical quantity. This physical quantity is known as power. That is whole about the philosophy behind defining the concept power. So what uh, power is? Here it is said that power is time rate at which work is done and that we call instantaneous power. Instantaneous power P is defined as the time rate at which work is done. So what P will be? P will be dW by dt, time rate at which work is done. Making use of uh, definition of work, dW is equal to f dot dr, we get P is equal to dW by dt or f dot dr by dt or f dot v. So power is again dot product of force and velocity of the particle at which force is applied. Here we have to see, uh, we have to see very important thing, velocity of not body, it is velocity of the point or particle at which force is applied. Of course, if the body is in translation motion, velocity of all of its particle will be the same. So we can say the power is uh, dot product of force and velocity of the body. And that will be case throughout the translation motion. But when rotatory motion becomes, so velocity of the all particles of the body will be different. Or some when deformation will be there, again velocity of all the particles are different. So in such cases where rotation are involved or deformation are involved, to decide power or work, what we have to consider for work, 
we have to consider displacement of the particle at which force is applied. And for power, we have to consider velocity of the particle at which force is acting. So here again, here V vector is the velocity of the particle at which the force F vector is acting. So that is again very important idea. Another important idea in power is relation of power with kinetic energy. Again, if we consider a single particle or single rigid body, the entire work done on the body will be equal to change in its kinetic energy. So we can write for power for a single particle or rigid body dw is equal to dk thus p is equal to dw by dt or dk by dt. So for a single particle or single rigid body power is also equal to rate of change in its kinetic energy that is again very important idea. So don't get confused. This can only be used for a single body. It cannot be used for a system where internal forces are involved and they will particularly store potential energy. In SI, power is measured in joule per second, abbreviated as watt and its symbol is capital W. Sometimes power is also measured in horsepower and that is a practical unit. So what is the relation between horsepower and watt? That is again very useful idea. So 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watt. So that's all about concept of power. Now we are equipped well to consider application of the work kinetic energy theorem and concept of power in various examples. Example 1. A 5 kg ball is dropped from top of a tower. When it falls through a height of 20 meter, it acquires a speed of 10 meter per second. Find the work done by the air resistance. Again here, it is not given how the air resistance depends on velocity of the ball. But still, we will be able to find work done by air resistance with the help of work on the theorem. Let us see how we can do it. Consider here the initial position. The ball is held. Now it is dropped. So after falling a distance h, it acquires a velocity v. We call it final position. It is initial position. That is step one, we have defined the initial and final positions and say this is displacement h. Now we consider free body diagram of the ball at some intermediate stage, say here. So the ball, force acting on it are mg downward and a resistance r upward. Again, r we don't know how r depends on velocity, what the magnitude of r is, but let us denote it by r. So now we apply the work kinetic theorem initial and final kinetic energies that is first state so initial kinetic energy will be zero because velocity is zero and final kinetic energy will be half mv square k initial is equal to zero and k final is equal to half mv square now for h is equal to 20 meter uh, speed will be 10 and mass will be 5 so what we can write here 250 joule how half into 5 into 10 square that will be 250 joules so final kinetic energy is 250 joules now say in second step what has been told find work done of each individual force with the help of abd and displacement so for the work done of mg we know mg is constant so work done will be mgh positive and for uh, a resistance we don't know how to calculate work done? So we denote it by a symbol W subscript R and as an unknown quantity. So work done by air resistance and gravity. WR, the work done by air resistance, we keep it unknown. And W by gravity, WG is MGH. And its value will be what? M is 5 kg, G is 10 and H is 20. So this will be 1000 joules. Now we substitute this value, this value and these two values in work energy theorem that is third step. Substitute the above values in the work kinetic energy theorem. We get what wi to f is equal to k final minus k initial and wi to f is work done by all the forces. So it will be wr plus wg. So wr plus wg is equal to k final minus k initial. This quantity is unknown, so we keep it WR and for WG, we substitute 1000 Joule. For KF, we substitute 250 Joule and for KI, we substitute 0. So what we get? WR per plus 1000 is equal to 250 minus 0. 
So from here we can find very easily what is WR. So WR is minus 750 Joule. So in this way we are able to calculate work done by air resistance without knowing the actual nature of the air resistance. Now what we can conclude from here that is a important note. Work energy theorem can also be used to find work done by an unknown force provided that work done by all other forces as well as change in kinetic energy is known because what we have seen in this example the two forces are R and Mg so work done by Mg we know and change in kinetic energy we know so we can calculate work done by air resistance here in this example the air resistance is unknown but work done by gravity and change in kinetic energy are known so we are in a position to calculate work done by air resistance now let us consider the next example example 2 a box of mass m is attached to one end of a spring of force constant k the other end of which is fixed the box can slide on a horizontal floor where coefficient of friction is mu the box is held compressing the spring by a distance x0 the spring force in this position is more than the force of static friction find speed of the box when it passes the equilibrium position when released now just see situation here that is uh, this uh, uh, box uh, of mass m is connected here with the spring the other end of the spring is connected to a fixed support or wall now the box is held compressing the spring by an amount x0 it means suppose here was the spring relax length so from relax length the spring is compressed by distance x0 again here the spring force will be uh, is given greater than the force of static friction so if you release this box this blocks will rush towards this side and what you have to calculate the speed of the box when it passes through equilibrium position means when the spring is relaxed so what we can do here again we uh, identify initial and final situation so here initial situation the uh, box speed is zero so kinetic energy will be zero in final situation we assume speed of the box to be v so what the kinetic energy will be half mv square now we show the FBD of the box at some intermediate stage, say here. So this, and we show all the forces acting on it. One force is uh, Mg. Again, intermediate stage means at a some uh, distance x from equilibrium position. So here, Mg and uh, N normal reaction. Again, spring force because here spring is compressed by amount x. So spring force will be Kx. And force of kinetic friction will be here in this direction. So F kinetic friction and that will be equal to mu n. So N here by applying Newton's law N will be equal to mg and F will be equal to mu mg. Mu into n or n is mg so F is mu mg. So we have applied Newton's law here in this diagram. Now what is uh, that uh, we for in first step we write the both the kinetic energy initial and final. In second step we write expression for work done of all these forces. So let us see initial and final kinetic energies of the box ki is zero because the box was at rest and the final kinetic energy is half mv square why are you writing half mv square because v is unknown and we have to calculate this v work done by the forces acting on the block what the forces are mg and friction and spring force so w by gravity is zero because mg is acting downward and displacement here so displace and meant and mg are perpendicular similarly work done by normal action will be zero because displacement and normal actions are always perpendicular so w by n is zero now what will be work done by uh, friction that will be friction is constant and displacement is x naught so minus mu mg x naught and work done by spring force is very simple half k x naught square so w by spring force is half k x naught square and that we have seen in the previous lecture how to calculate work done by spring force and uh, what we do now we substitute all these values in the theorem work energy theorem substituting 
the above values in the work kinetic energy theorem we get what is theorem w initial to final is equal to k final minus k initial and what is w i to f sum of work of all these forces w g plus w n plus w f plus w s is equal to k f minus k i so w g plus w n plus w f plus w s is equal to k final minus k initial so first term is 0, second term is 0, this is what minus mu mg x naught, this is what half k x naught square, and this is half mv square, this is 0. Let's substitute the values. 0 plus 0 minus mu mg x naught plus half k x naught square is equal to half mv square minus 0. And from this equation, we can easily find what is v. So v is under root k x naught square minus 2 mu mg x naught. So, in this way, we are able to find speed of the block. Now, you see, if uh, we are not knowing the work energy theorem, what could we have done? We have done this uh, step uh, and uh, from here, we have to calculate acceleration and by integrating acceleration, we can find uh, speed. So, that was two-step process and we have seen in the deduction process of the theorem that these two steps are combined. Now we'll see the next example. Example 3. A box of mass 10 kg is projected up an inclined plane with a speed of 20 meter per second. The coefficient of friction between the box and the plane is 0.5. Find the distance traveled by the box on the plane before it stops first time. Why we have seen just see why first time let us see because it will depends on the angle of inclination if angle of inclination is more than angle of repose then block cannot stop on the permanently on the inclined plane see here what is angle of uh, inclination 37 degree so for this if a kinetic friction or static friction or friction coefficient more than 1037 0.75 only when the block can be at permanent rest on the block but here friction coefficient is less so block will if you release slide sound so if block is projected with this velocity it will go some distance stops mental there and again starts sliding back down that's why it is given here before it stops first time now by understanding, of course, uh, this idea, what we, we have explained here, is not necessary to solve this problem. But if you analyze such kind of things in every problem, it will strengthen your understanding of the physics. Again, to solve the problem, we have to use our three-step process. And what are these three steps? First step, specify initial and final position. Second step, draw FBD at some intermediate stage and show the displacement by observing the various forces and displacement from FBD we can write values of work by each individual force and if you know values or expression for each individual force and values or expression for kinetic energies at initial and final position then we can substitute these values in work kinetic theorem here to proceed with the solution we have to assume the displacement of the block in upward direction say it is x let the box stops covering a distance x now we can see here this box starts here at uh, speed 20 meter per second and covering a displacement x it stops here now we show fbd at some intermediate stage say here so the block is shown here we show all the forces one of the forces its weight mg and mg is what 10 mass uh, 10 kg and acceleration to the gravity is 10 meter per second square so weight will be 100 newton so we have shown weight now we show the normal reaction so normal reaction will weight, uh, make angle 37 with the gravity so that is normal reaction now we show the force of kinetic friction that will be acting downward so force of kinetic friction now we can resolve this gravity into its uh, component along the displacement and perpendicular displacement so these are this line will show the uh, component of gravity along the displacement and this line will show the component of gravity perpendicular to the displacement so this will be very easy to write 60 newton and that will be what 80 newton because you can see sine 37 is uh, 
थ्री बाई फाइव एंड साइन कॉस थर्टी सेवन इज फोर बाई फाइव नाउ फ्रॉम हियर वी कैन राइट एन इज इक्वल टू एटी न्यूटन एंड वंस वी फाइंड एन एटी न्यूटन वी कैन राइट करंटिक फ्रिक्शन म्यू के इन टू एन एंड म्यू के इज पॉइंट फाइव सो पॉइंट फाइव इंटू एटी सो एफ इज फोर्टी न्यूटन नाउ न्यूटन लॉ ऑल द थिंग्स वी हैव अप्लाइड हियर इन दिस डायग्राम नाउ वी कैन सी फ्रॉम हियर वैल्यू ऑफ ईच फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट and displacement is a known quantity so we can write expression for work done of each force but we can write here the initial kinetic energy value and final kinetic energy value let us see here initial and final kinetic energies so what is initial kinetic energy half into m into v square so half into 10 into 20 square so k initial is half into 10 into 20 square and that is equal to 2000 so And what is final kinetic energy? Zero because speed is zero, and k final is zero. We have seen initial and final kinetic energy. Now we will write expression for work done of each force. Work done by the forces acting on the block. What first we write work done by gravity. So calculating work done by gravity. So we don't consider this component only this component. Sixty is downward and displacement here. In the opposite direction, so work done by gravity will be minus 60x. So work done by gravity is minus 60x. Similarly, we can write work done by normal force that will be zero because normal reaction is perpendicular to displacement. W n is zero. Now we can write work done by friction. Friction is in this direction and that is constant, and displacement is here. So work done by friction will be what minus 40x, and W by friction, W F is minus 40x. Now we have expression for work done of each force and initial and final kinetic energy. So these values we can substitute in work energy theorem. Substituting the above values in the work kinetic energy theorem, we get what is theorem? W I to F is equal to K F minus K I. And what is W I to F? Sum of all these work done W G plus W N plus W F is equal to K final minus K initial. So W G plus W N plus W F is equal to K final minus K initial. Now we substitute value in the state of W G. What you write minus sixty x and zero minus forty x is equal to zero minus two thousand. And so it is very simple. What is minus hundred x is equal to minus Two thousand. So hundred x is equal to two thousand. So x is equal to twenty meter. So x is twenty meter. Very easy to find. Now we have seen in the previous example and in this example that work done of normal is zero. Again, normal is a very special thing here. Normal reaction by stationary surface. This idea we conclude as a remark or note that work done by normal reaction from stationary surface in all situation will always be zero. but we remark it we conclude it later on let us see the next example example 4 that is situation here you can see the this man is pulling this block or this box with the help of a string so what is the problem here a man starts pulling a box and acquires a speed of 10 meter per second when the string makes an angle of 37 degree as shown If the mass of the box is twenty kg, calculate the work done by all the forces acting on the box. Now again, acceleration of the man is not given, so we cannot find the string tension. Again, solving this problem with the help of Newton's law is very difficult or impossible because by Newton's law, if we don't know the acceleration of the block of this man, we cannot find acceleration of the block, so we cannot find tension, so we cannot find work done by all the forces. With the help of Newton's law, here work kinetic energy theorem finds its particular application. Let us see how we analyze the situation. Because work kinetic energy is what work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy. And what is in problem? The man starts pulling. So initial speed of the man is zero. So initial speed of the box will be zero. So its initial kinetic energy will be zero. Now if final speed of man is given. so by using constant relation we can find final speed of the box and if we can find final speed of the box we can find its final kinetic energy so we can write change in kinetic energy and that change in kinetic energy will be equal to 
work done by all the forces what is known so in this problem we have to only find change in kinetic energy or in other words speed of the box and that is problem simple constant motion so what you can situation here say the speed of man is 10 meter per second so this 10 meter per second can be resolved in two components one along the string and one perpendicular to the string so this angle will be 37 because this angle 37 is given so this component will be 8 meter per second and this component will be 6 meter per second what it shows that uh, with the hair with this speed 10 meter per second what it decides it decides the rate at which the length of the string between the man and the pulley is increasing and by the same rate the length of the string between the pulley and the box will be decreasing so the speed of the box will be 8 meter per second that is simple idea from constant when speed of the man becomes 10 meter per second the string length between the man and the pulley increases at the rate 8 meter per second thus at this instant the speed of the box is 8 meter per second upwards so that is 8 meter per second upward is the speed of the box now we can find change in currenting at the box what initial and final currenting energies of the box actually man started from this so initial speed of the box was zero so initial currenting at the box is zero so kia is zero and what is k final half into mass of the box into speed 8 square so half into 20 kg into 8 square so this is simply 640 zero now we can substitute these values in work kinetic energy theorem. So what is that uh, work done by all the forces equal to change in kinetic energy? So simply we can write here the work done by all the forces 640 zone. Let us see here. Substitute the above values in the work kinetic energy theorem. And knowing the fact that forces acting on the block are its weight and tensile force of the string, we get w initial to final is equal to k final minus k initial so we have to calculate this entire w i to f so w g plus w t the work done by all the forces is equal to k final minus k initial so k final is 640 joule that is zero so this is equal to w g plus w t is equal to 640 joule so that is work done by all the forces so i can see here this was simple problem but again very uh, not ordinary problem because if you don't know the work kinetic theorem, we cannot find solution of this problem. Because to apply Newton's law, uh, informations are insufficient. As we have seen in the first problem, in the first problem, again, we cannot use Newton's law because the nature of air resistance was not given. So sometimes work kinetic theorem will become, uh, will prove it superior than Newton's law where speed change or a space interval is given or in fact in all situation where speed change or a space interval are involved we have to use work and e theorem now let us consider the next example example five a vehicle of mass m starts moving such that its speed v varies with distance traveled s according to the law v is equal to k root s where k is a positive constant deduce the relation to express the instantaneous power delivered to the vehicle now we have to calculate power so now for power what we have to use either f dot v but if we are considering only single object so what we can see power of all the forces acting on that object will be equal to rate of change in its kinetic energy. So we can use that idea here. So how we consider the vehicle is uh, represented by a particle that is moving on a curvilinear path. When it has traveled a distance s, the force f acting on it and its speed v are shown in the figure. So that is path. So it has table distance s, its mass m, f here and v here. Now, why the vehicle is represented by a particle? Because it is in translation motion. It is not that the vehicle is very small. Because what we have seen in kinematics that if a body, rigid body in translation motion, it can be treated as a particle. So in this way, how we proceed? 
we can resolve f into two components fn and f tau f tau is tangential component fn is normal component so we start with that idea what is the power f dot v instantaneous power delivered that is p is equal to f dot v so f dot v instead of f what we can write here fn vector plus f tau vector dot v vector so f tau vector plus fn vector dot v vector so if we solve this dot product the first term will be f tau into v and second term will be zero because fn and v are perpendicular so we know only f tau into v so what is f tau m a tau because uh, from newton's law we know what is a tau v dv by ds so we can write power so power is m a tau into v and instead of v a tau what we can write here tangential acceleration of the vehicle a tau is equal to v dv by ds and that we can calculate from here it will be simply k square by 2 we can verify it now we substitute this value here for a tau and for v again here we can write the power from equation 1 and 2 we get p is equal to m k cube by 2 root s how we can obtain for a tau we write k square by 2 again for v what we write k s so we get this result now what we can conclude from here the result what we have seen earlier what the normal component of a force does not work hence to change the direction of motion no power is consumed power is consumed only to increase speed it is very remarkable fact that normal component force does not consume any energy it means just to change direction of motion of any object we are not required to consume any power or we are not required to do any work the work is done or power is consumed or power is delivered only to change speed now let's consider the next example example 6 a block of mass m is suspended from a spring of force constant k it is held maintaining the spring relaxed as shown in the figure this way that is a block was suspended with the help of spring and now it is held by this end maintaining the spring is relaxed it means there is no spring force in this situation and uh, what we can see here the hand is applying a upward force equal to weight of the block what is asked in the situation let us see part a if the applied force is decreased gradually how far below the initial position will the block stop it means if the applied force by man is decreased gradually so f upward initially equal to mg if you reduce f the block will shift down and the spring will be extended by small amount and spring force will be developed will be equal to decrement of the uh, uh, applied force and uh, in this way at every instant of time during downward shift the block is in translation equilibrium so we can use here condition of translation equilibrium so what how uh, we can proceed with the solution let us uh, discuss the entire thing what we have done earlier since the force applied by the hand is decreased gradually the block shifts downward with negligible speed remaining always in translational equilibrium its weight mg is balanced by the upward spring force kx and the applied force f what is kx kx x is displacement of the block or extension of the spring now here we have seen that at every instant of time the block is in translation equilibrium now if you keep on decreasing the applied force kx will increase and when f will be zero kx will be equal to mg and that we have to calculate so analysis of this problem requires only application of newton's law so what we do here that is uh, again at some lower position so the displacement x so we have seen mg is downward and uh, f is upward so the remaining uh, mg is larger force f is smaller force the difference of mg and f is developed in the spring so that is kx so what you can see kx plus f is equal to mg now if we further reduce f kx will increase so when kx will be equal to mg there is no f and 
that is downward displacement of the block and which is asking this problem. So we can see f plus kx is equal to mg for this situation. And what we can see further, when the applied force becomes zero, the spring force becomes equal to weight and the uh, block stops below a distance x naught. Say that distance is x naught from the initial position. So we show that uh, distance by x naught. In this case, what is spring force kx naught upward and that kx naught is equal to mg. This is mg and there is no f. So what we can write here, kx naught is equal to mg. And from here, we can easily write what is x naught. x naught is mg by k. So that is very simple situation. Now, whenever there is a motion which is happening very gradually, it means at every instant of time, speed is zero. So there is no change in kinetic energy. The uh, body will always be in translational equilibrium. In that case, it is advisable to use Newton's law instead of work energy theorem. Now, we will consider the second case, part B. In part B, what has been done? This hand is removed suddenly. Means uh, the force supporting the blocks is removed suddenly. What will happen? Let us see. B. If the applied force is removed suddenly, how far below? the initial position will the block come to an instantaneous rest now why instantaneous rest? let us see here again uh, how we can think situation in the previous part the applied force was decreased gradually keeping the block always in equilibrium but a sudden removal of the applied force will certainly create an unbalanced of forces and make the block to move with an acceleration that must vary with the spring extension. Why? Because if you remove the block at that time, the only force is mg. So the block will start uh, accelerating with acceleration g. But as the block will move further down, the spring will be extended. So a spring force will act upward. So it will reduce the net force and so acceleration. So acceleration of block is variable and it will depend on the spring extension. So in this case, the speed of the block is changing over a space interval. So it is advisable to use work energy theorem. But uh, let us see what is happening in this situation. We will analyze the entire process qualitatively. After removal of the applied force, the block begins to accelerate downwards. This downward acceleration decreases with increase in spring extension and becomes zero when a spring extension becomes x naught equal to mg by k as we have seen in earlier problem when a spring extension is mg by k the spring force is equal to mg so at that time acceleration block is zero now we can see what is happening during this uh, description see the block mg acting downward the hand is removed so block will accelerate at that time with acceleration g but as the block shifts a distance x what will happen see here the distance x uh, the spring force will be kx and that is less than mg mg is greater than spring force is smaller so the block will accelerate downward initially we have seen the speed of block is zero now when spring extension will be equal to x not equal to mg by k at that time kx will be equal to mg so k we write kx naught so uh, we show here speed is v now at that time we have seen actions in the x naught x naught is uh, defined mg by k so what is spring force uh, mg and uh, that is uh, gravity and the spring force kx naught is again mg so acceleration is zero so at that time speed of the block has become maximum speed so block will not stop here it will move further downward and what will happen further spring will extend it more than x naught so spring force will be greater than mg so it will retard the block and at some time when uh, spring uh, extension will be at maximum the block will stop so let us see during this period the upward spring force is always smaller than the downward force of gravity the speed of the block is increases and becomes maximum at a spring extension x naught. So this is a description from the situation here to here. Now what will further? As the block move downward, the 
extension will increase beyond x0 so spring force kx will be greater than mg and block will retard its speed will reduce ultimately block stops at that time extension spring is maximum so what we can see further this is maximum speed now we show again thereafter the block keeps on moving downwards making the spring extension more than x0 now the spring force becomes more than the force of gravity thus the block decay decelerates to an instant stop where spring extension is maximum say xm we show this situation here so that is uh, we see from here to this uh, extension x uh, particularly intermediate uh, between, uh, before xm so here mg and spring force is greater than mg you can see the length of vector so at that time the block will retard and speed will be less than vm so speed we have seen less than vm but uh, at some extension when xm say here we show this xm maximum extension of the spring downward at that time the the we assume the block speed has become zero it it is at instant stop why instant stop because kx is more than mg immediately after reaching here the block will start moving upward so mg so kx is uh, much larger than mg and we assume the block is here at instant stop we assume its velocity to be zero v finally zero now analyzing this situation and that situation we can solve this problem so to analyze this situation what we have to consider this is initial position that is final position and we can consider any of the abd either this or that because uh, we have to consider free body diagram at some intermediate states let us see the block the initial configuration of velocity is zero and at some intermediate states extension is x so mg spring force is kx and finally uh, that is a uh, maximum extension xm speed is zero so initial configuration final configuration and abd at some intermediate stage with the displacement now we can write initial kinetic energy and final kinetic energy because both are zero very simple and by observing these forces force vectors and displacement we can write expressions for the work done by gravity and work done by spring force work done by gravity will be simply mg into xm and work done by spring force will be minus half k xm square because kx is opposite to xm now we write initial and final kinetic energies of the block that is uh, ki is zero and k final is zero very simple to write k final is zero work done by the forces acting on the block work done by gravity is mg xm plus because mg and xm are in the same direction and ws work done by spring force is minus half k xm square why minus because uh, kx and xm are in opposite direction now we substitute these values in work kinetic energy theorem substituting these values in the work kinetic energy theorem we get let's substitute wi to f is equal to kf minus ki what is wi to f wg plus ws and what is kf minus k is zero so wg plus uh, ws is equal to k final minus k initial and instead of wg what we write mg xm and instead of ws what we write minus half kxm square so mg xm minus half kxm square is equal to zero minus zero because it is zero it is zero and by solving this equation we can easily find what is xm so xm is simply 2 mg by k or 2 x0 so what we can see the block will move what double of the equilibrium extension because in previous part extension was x0 so here the block was moving double of x0 because x0 was mg by k so that was again very simple situation but a very important here in one part we have to use newton's law in other part we have to use work kinetic theorem why in first part we have used newton's law because at every instant of time the block was in equilibrium so we have to use condition of equilibrium but in second situation we have seen 
and the space interval and we know the speed change that is zero so we have to use work under theorem now let us consider the next example example 7 a block of mass m starts sliding down from the top a of a frictionless track as shown in the figure the section bc of the track is circular of radius r so that is track and this entire track is in vertical plane so the block is uh, here at the top and this height is 2r that is equal to uh, diameter of this uh, circular track and the block is released from here release means it is given as gentle push it starts from here with negligible speed so it slides down and reaches here at b and it will go at some distance now what is asked in the problem determine the force of normal reaction on the block at the lowest point b of the track so uh, find normal action we have to use newton's law because where we have to use newton's law and where we have to use work continuity theorem work continuity theorem we have seen that uh, wherever space interval and speed change are involved we will use work continuity theorem and when to use newton's law because newton's law involves all instantaneous quantities instantaneous acceleration so newton's law will be used only to describe what is happening at a point of time so uh, to find normal reaction at point b we have to use first newton's second law the force of normal reaction on the block can be obtained by applying the newton's second law so how we apply here conditions of motion of the block at point b is shown in the figure that way b so forces acting on it are mg and normal reaction and conditional motion means we have to show its effective force mass into acceleration and we know at the lowest point speed of the block will be maximum so it will not have any tangential acceleration it will have only normal uh, component acceleration because its direction is continuously changing so what will be uh, the uh, coordinate axis uh, normal axis and tangential axis and M A N A N is what V B square by R. V B is velocity of the block at this time. So what we can write uh, equation from Newton's second law. At this position, the block has the maximum speed. Hence, its tangential acceleration is zero. At this location, the block has only normal component of acceleration. So what we can write uh, further that is uh, N minus M G is equal to M V B square by R summation fn is equal to mn what it gives n minus mg is equal to mvb square by r say equation one now in this equation what we define vb and that we can find by work theorem so priorly if you plan the solution you can think that uh, uh, we have to use this step and for velocity of the block we have to use work theorem so in making a solution you can write work theorem step earlier but what is the thinking process because if we need work area theorem we'll use so we have started what is required because we have to know the force so we have used newton's law but uh, writing this equation one we know that vb is unknown and this vb we can find work area theorem because it involves space interval and speed change to find speed vb work connecting at the theorem should be used and how will you use let us see speed vp of the block at the point b say here v is zero and uh, we intermediate block so we use the three step process we show the initial position and final position and abd at some intermediate stage so we are drawing here abd so forces are mg and normal reaction and there is no other force because track is frictionless and here finally the block speed is vp so we can write initial and final kinetic energies and work done by the observing these two forces so initial and final kinetic energies of the block ki is zero because speed at a is zero and k finally is what half mvb square because vb we have to find k is equal to zero and kb is equal to half mvb square this work done by the forces acting on the block 
So work done by gravity we can find straight forward because uh, displacement in the direction of gravity is 2r. So work done by gravity is what? mg into 2r positive. So 2mgr. So w is what? mg into 2r equal to 2mgr. And work done by normal will be 0 because at every instant of time displacement dr will be perpendicular to normal direction. So and wn will be 0. And we have seen earlier that work done by normal reaction from a stationary surface will always be zero. Now we can make it a guideline. So whenever there is a stationary surface, uh, work done by its normal reaction will always be zero. Now we substitute these values in work kinetic area theorem. Substituting these values in the work kinetic area theorem, what we get? Say, let us see. W i to f is equal to k final minus k initial. W i to f is w g plus w n and k finally is half mb square and k initial is 0. So wg plus wn is equal to kb minus k. k finally is kb and k initial is k. wz is 2 mgr and plus 0 is equal to half mvb square. Now if you see the equation 1, we need actually mvb square by r and this mvb square by r we can find from here very easily. What will be? We bring here R on this side and 2 on that side. So MVB square by R will be equal to 4MG. So what we substitute simply MVB square by R from this equation. So MVB square is equal to 4MGR. Equation number 2. Substituting value of MVB square by R from equation 2 in equation 1. What we get? n minus mg is equal to 4 mg so n is equal to 5 mg so normal reaction at the bottom point is 5 mg in this situation now what we can conclude at present that uh, work done by normal reaction from a stationary surface will always be zero so we make it a guideline so that is what work done by force of normal reaction from a stationary surface is always zero so wherever we find a situation, we will use this idea. Concluding today's lecture, what we can make an idea? The most important thing is how to use work energy theorem. That is three step process. Specify initial and final position. Second step, draw a BD at some intermediate stage and show the displacement. With the help of forces shown in the BD and displacement will be in a position to write force of work done by every force and writing work done by every force and expressions for our initial and final kinetic energies, we substitute these things in work kinetic theorem. Another important thing what we can conclude is where to use work kinetic theorem and where to use Newton's law. That is very important idea. Work energy theorem or method of work energy should be used when space interval and speed change are required and when to use Newton's law. When we have to describe what is happening at a point of time. Concluding this lecture, let us discuss today's home assignment. Home assignment. First, revise all the ideas and examples discussed today in this lecture. And second is uh, some questions from SCV. Attempt SCV, Chapter 8, Exercise 1 to 18 and 31 to 64. Actually, in question 19 to 30, potential energy and idea of energy conservation are involved and that we discuss in uh, next lecture and in some question here you may find use of non initial frame but I will recommend that try to decide how we can use work any theorem in non initial frame that idea will discuss in the next class and next class we devote how to use the work any theorem in non initial frame and idea of potential energy thanks for patient listening we will meet in the next class The words of a language as they are written or spoken do not seem to play any role in my mechanism of thought. The physical entities which seem to serve as elements in thought are certain science and more or less clear images. Albert Einstein